Hello clever people and welcome to my review for High Flying Bird. So High Flying Bird is a movie from director Steven Sotomheim who has directed films such as Unsane, Logan Lucky, The Oceans Movies, Magic Mike, and this one is shot on an iPhone. The other movie shot on the iPhone recently was Unsane, which I believe that he shot in an iPhone 5. And this one I believe is shot on an iPhone 7 or 8. And it follows the story of a man who is involved in the NBA and suddenly a there's a feud between him and another player. And it's about how his agent deals with that and it's really about kind of how his agent deals with his life and the life of his players and the whole company. It's a very complex movie. It's not like there's one clear distinct storyline. There's a lot of storylines going on at the same time all threaded together by that central feud. So I had not heard of this movie until the day that it came out. It's a Netflix original and I was excited for it because Steven Sotenheim I learned, or not Steven Sotenheim, Steven Soderberg directed it and I was excited purely because of that. I like Ocean's Eleven, the half of it that I've seen that when I was watching it the DVD kind of failed so I only got to watch half of the movie and I just haven't gotten around to it since. But I like Logan Lucky, I think that's good and I really like Unsane. So I didn't have much expectations because I didn't know what the story was about. All I knew was from director Steven Sodenberg. So I was excited and I was not disappointed. High Flying Bird is a really, really good film. What really impressed me about this movie is something that I haven't really been impressed by with a movie before, and it's with the director. Because Steven Soderbergh, what's so special about him and his filmmaking is that he understands that he is not the best director ever. He understands that he is not world class, he's not Martin Scorsese, he's not Akira Kurosawa, he is just a small indie director that makes some pretty good films. And he's made bigger films before, but his true stride where he does films really, really well are in an indie market or in a lesser selling market. And he understands that. He also understands he's not making a big blockbuster movie, so he doesn't try to make the scope too big. What he understands about his movies is that he is an indie filmmaker that isn't recognizable by name to the average public and that he can only get by by having a special style. And that's exactly what he has. All of his movies have a similar feeling style. They're similarly structured. They're similarly put together. And what I've always, I always knew it about Steven Soderbergh, but what I really realized with this movie is how special that is. The fact that he does not think he is an amazing director. And because of that, his movies are never pretentious, they're always really well flowing, and he knows how to make a Steven Soderbergh movie. And I'm really appreciative of that because this movie works really, really well. The dialogue, the writer also did a great job because the dialogue is very snappy. The cinematography for being shot on an iPhone, I didn't know that it was shot on an iPhone before I started watching it. The only thing I noticed that was a bit abnormal was that it kind of felt like a fishbowl type thing. That's it. Like it kind of felt like that. But besides that, it wasn't that big of a deal. I thought maybe that was just more of a stylistic choice. But the fact that it was shot on an iPhone didn't really stand out to me. And Unsane it did. And that was kind of the point of the movie. It was supposed to have a very cheap, creepy feeling that way. But this movie, it, it, there wasn't really a point for it being shot on an iPhone, in my opinion. I think he just wanted to show off what you can do with one. And it'll make so many people feel lazy that they can't make incredible films because he did with just his phone. And the performances in this movie, too, are great. They are all great. Every single performance just lands. And that's the thing with good directors that usually isn't mentioned about them. A director's first goal is to give great get great performance out of their actors. I've learned that from being in theater and I've learned that from seeing a lot of movies, but usually the credit goes to the actor as usually it should, but with when an ensemble works, when it's a group of people and every single person in that movie works, that is because of the director. And you can tell with this movie, the performances were so good because the director knew what he was doing. And every single performance, whether it was one line or it was the lead character in the movie, all of them incredible. I don't really have a whole lot of problems with High Flying Bird. I think it's a memorable movie and it's well done and like I said Soderbergh knows what type of movie he's making so because of that he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. 
He's not making anything world class. It's not like he's making a flawless movie, but he doesn't make mistakes because he knows what he's supposed to do. And because of that, I can't really point out any flaws with High Flying Bird. This is a great movie. It's on Netflix. Go and watch it if you haven't. It's definitely going to end up in my top 20 of the year. Maybe it'll be an honorable mention at that point. Depends on how good 2019 is. But already, I am so happy that I got to check out this movie. I will give High Flying Bird a 7.75 out of 10. Alright, that concludes my review for High Flying Bird. So, what are your thoughts on this film, or what do you think of Steven Soderbergh as, an, as a director? Comment in the comment section below and let me know. I'm Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.